What's up, mindsetters? Great 10 to 12 maths lit pupils. It is your time to shine. I am Looney, and with me in studio is Haley. Haley, how are you doing? Hi, Looney. Very well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And hi, guys. Hi, mindsetters. So, what are we doing on today's show? Today, we're going to be doing models, and we're going to be looking at packing. And we're going to be looking at some examples on the board. And we've also got quite exciting stuff. So I'm not going to say anything until okay. we get there. But it's quite <laughs> a nice lesson. That's really cool. Mindset is, you heard it, we're doing packing. And there's exciting stuff. I can see, but you can't. So we'll do exciting things throughout the whole show. Don't forget to hit us up on Facebook. Our page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra. On Twitter, you can get us at learn extra. Remember to download the show notes, the videos, the schedules, and anything else you want to know about Mindset on Learn extra at co.za forward slash live. Some guys have been having problems with that address, so I'll give you another one. It's mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra forward slash live. It'll take you to the exact same place, and you can check out our schedules and check out what products we offer. I'd like to thank Macmillan for sponsoring this great show. Later on during the show, I'll tell you about the CAPS recruitment drive we're having here on Mindset, but for now, let's take it back to Haley. Thanks, Lily. I'm just listening to Lily giving you two different addresses. And it just reminds me of the subject that I'm actually teaching and the one that hopefully you tuned into. We always have more than one way of doing things. Yes. And it's exactly the same with the, with the website. You've just got to find the way that works for you. So just go and log in. Isn't that right, Lenny? Yes. Okay. So today, guys, we're going to be doing models and we're going to be looking at packing. So let's just brief explanation. In this lesson, we're going to discuss how to pack different shaped objects into a container in the most efficient way. Because at the end of the day, in real life, you want to be efficient. You want it to be easy to pack, you want it to be cheaper for the container that you're actually creating, um, and we're gonna be looking at efficiency. We're also gonna be looking at packing sometimes. We think of packing as just packing boxes, but what about like doing a kitchen where we need to put tiles in a kitchen? There's also an efficient way of doing this and maybe a less efficient way. So we're going to be looking at efficiency. Usually comes down to cheaper. Hey, so to start off with, this is my exciting thing. I've got a practical activity today. We've got a roving camera in the studio. And we're going to be doing, having some fun. So the Mindset online shop opened recently and orders for books and DVDs are being captured packed and dispatched to learners across the country. Now, let's first go to that page, and I've got it up here on the board. Right, so the website is um, mindset.co.za forward slash shop, and you come up this wonderful page. So we're going to quickly look at it, and then we're going to go and look at our packing. If you look at the page, we've got great exam revision crazy sale, which is up to 15% off, and that's specifically for our matrix out there and that'll take you to all the subjects you can do accounting geography science you've got math maths lit of course which you can buy the exam revision kit which is really awesome and it's for a mere 220 rand so wonderful wonderful exam revision it's like everything we've done absolutely brilliant and physical science let's go back to our page and see then you've got your teacher resources which you won't need, but of course your revision resources and maths lit you can go into that. You can see all the different subjects we teach. Right here we got what's, what's available for maths lit. We've got our grade 12 exam papers. There's the grade 10, grade 11, grade 12, all the things, and our revision kit. There's our special, our revision kit again. So guys, go on to the shop. It's really important. This is like the rest of your life, and it's worth it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to ask Wilson, our cameraman, to help me because the problem is how to pack the DVDs and books into a box for shipping. So Wilson, let's go over to our table and let's have a look at the books. So what we have here is we have various books and box sets. So that would be a box set and this is of DVDs. So if I open it up, you can see all the different DVDs. And this is a box set of eight DVDs. This is grade 10 life sciences. Okay? And we've got all the different subjects. I've got some physical science. Then that's a full pack. So you would get a full pack like this. Um, we've got our mathematics. Maths literacy is also like that. Um, English, your second additional language. DVD set. We've got a physical science set. Also comes with a book. And I've got another grade 11 maths. 
And then I've also got some books. These are exam papers in the books. Now, the challenge that we have is we need to pack all this that is on this table. And I hope that you can see some of them are thick. So we've got our history, which is quite a thick book. I'm hoping you can see all that, where we got our past papers for English, and that is a thin book. So everything that is on the table needs to be packaged off to one learner, okay? Or maybe it was a school. So one learner, and the box that I have is the size. So now apparently these boxes were specially designed. Lily, did you know that? These boxes were designed, or maybe the DVDs were designed yes. around the box. Not sure which happened first. <laughs> so this is the box that works, and I've been told that everything on this table fits into this box, and in our last segment today, Luni and I are actually going to challenge and try and do that. So our challenge is going to be, and we can put the DVDs in different ways. We can put it flat going that way. I can put it totally flat on the bottom. And we'll look at that in the last segment. So I'm going to say thank you to Wilson. I'm going to put my box back on the floor. I'm going to say thank you to Wilson and I'm going to go back to the board so we can do a little bit of teaching before that. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to give you now some problems that we would get in the Macmillan textbook that will help you think about how we need to package our box later on. So let's go to our first question. If I could do that. Our first question is question one. Now I've totally lost my... Okay. okay. Question one is taken out of the Macmillan book for grade 10, chapter 15, page 258. And we've got question 12. So you have to fit boxes of sweets into a big cardboard box. The base of each box of sweets measures five centimeters by three centimeters. If the base of the cardboard box measures 25 centimeters by 20 centimeters, what is the maximum number of sweets boxes that you can pack into the base of the box? Now, in this case, we're only looking at the base. So we're basically looking at this in two dimensions. If I had the height as well, we would we'd create a little bit of a harder sum. So we're going to take it slow, and we're going to do the base first. So what I've done is I have drawn the box. So let me lab add lab labels to this. I've got, it was 25 centimeters. by 20 centimeters. My box, on the other hand, my box of sweets, was 5 centimeters by 3 centimeters. And I decided I'm going to start off by placing my box this way around. Okay? And I'm going to see how many of these can I fit into the length of the box. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the maths of it first. So my length is 25 centimeters. My length of the sweet box is five centimeters. So what I should be able to do is get five boxes across. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can actually do that. So I'm going to take my box and I'm going to clone it and put a second box in. There's a third box. Oops. There's a fourth box. Should be able to fit five boxes in. Fit five boxes in. Perfect. Hey, I shouldn't have any space left over, so my dimensions were slightly out. I've got five boxes going in. How many boxes can I go down if I've got a total of 20 centimeters? So let's try that. We've got 20 centimeters in my width, and my sweet box was how much? It was three centimeters. So I'm going to say 20 divided by three. And I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to find a calculator quickly. Okay, so my cal while my calculator's coming out, Looney, I wonder if you can give them a little bit of what's going on in our Facebook page, just while I get a calculator out. All right, cool. <laughs> Mindset is just to let you know, on Saturday, I won't tell you what's going on in the Facebook page because it's been very quiet. So on Saturday, we do have prelim school 
revision exam revision prelim exam revision saturday school on saturday this coming saturday and i will be in the house presenting it's physical sciences life sciences and maths so if you know all any of your friends because i know you guys do much let if you know any of your yeah. friends we will be going over paper one stuff all the paper one prelim exam revision we will be helping you with all of that i'll be in studio with in all of our awesome teachers so do remember to check that out remember guys we do have a great 10 to 12 caps recruitment drive that we are running here at mindset because mindset needs you so we need you to tell all your teachers your parents anyone you know guys that is into content development video presentation and all of that stuff remember to tell all your teachers your parents about that to go apply on mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash jobs applications do close on the 26th of August. I think Hayley is fine now. Hayley, I'm how are perfect. You thanks, Lily. Thanks for taking <laughs> over there, it's guys. Cool. <laughs> Do that. That just sounds brilliant. Okay, so my 20 divided by 3, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get an answer of 6,67. Six, so I'm going to write that in. It's very important that you write it in. 6,67. Six, but I cannot have 0.67 of a box. So in this case, I have to round down. So how many boxes can I fit in? I can actually only fit in 6 boxes. I'm going to end up with a little bit of space, but that's fine. So now let's check if I can get six in here. So I have a one, two, that's three, four, five, and six. Okay, they're not exactly all in the box. <laughs> this is good. Right, and I do have that little bit of extra space, and that's perfect. Now that I've worked out how many boxes I can fit in the length and how many in the breadth, I can go to the one on the page and actually do the calculation. I could count, could count them. Okay, so I've got five across and carry on counting. Well, I could say, well, okay, in actual fact, why are we struggling there? I've got five boxes across. I have five boxes across and six boxes going down, and I can multiply those two and see that I can fit 30 boxes. So that is one solution. But you know what, guys? I could actually put the box, and I could turn the box the other way. Now, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do the maths of it. So if I take the box and kind of turn the box around, and how many boxes could I fit in that way? So let's try that, the maths of it. So let's get a little bit more space and we're going to make this an ear big or we could take in our 25 centimeters in our length we are actually putting in the three centimeters okay we're going to get that solution how many we can put going down uh, going across and then going down we had 20 centimeters and we're dividing that by five and we should get four for that so let's get our calculator out to do 25 divided by three and if you need to use your calculator for both of these then use your calculator use your calculator it's it's that's what it's there for so just make sure that you are um, checking what you put into your calculator so how many boxes can we fit in here we can fit in eight boxes remember again we're rounding off so it was eight comma three three and we're actually rounding that to eight and now we've got eight by four so in actual fact, how many can I fit in here? I can fit in 32 boxes. So which works out better? This works out better. For the same area, the same size box, I can get more boxes in, more boxes of sweet. And this is important to be able to think of either or. You know, like the website, this one or that one. So it's important. All right, let's move on to the next page, next question. Right, so we now have, so we now have to fit the sweets in. The base of each box measures five by three. We've got the same thing. You want to prevent the sweets from shifting around in transport. Remember that little bit of extra space that we have? We don't want the sweets to be able to move because otherwise the boxes can get damaged. So you're going to wedge a length of fir formula to fill the space between the sweet boxes and the cardboard box. So what have we got here? What are the lengths and widths of each of the two pieces of formula that you would serve that purpose? Now, in the way we package the box, we're going to go with the best packaging. So we packaged, and let's go back to our drawing. Right, what did we say? We said we need to fit eight in here. Am I right? There were eight boxes and there were three centimeters each. 
So we're going to fit in eight boxes. We've put our things that way. Okay. And eight across, we had our eight times by three ended up with, so your eight times three was 24, which means we had one centimetre. Eight times, go back to, I think it was eight times, I've been told it's eight times four. Oh, we're fitting in eight boxes into the laying, and they're three centimetres each. Okay, <laughs> go back to this. They three centimeters each, which gives us 24 centimeters. So what is left on my 25 centimeter long length? I've got one centimeter remaining. So it needs to be one centimeter wide. So this is going to be one centimeter, and it's going to be 20 centimeters long. And then going uh, going across, going down. Remember, we fitted them all in. We had our 20 centimeters. We put four boxes in at five centimeters each so they fitted there was no space needed there so we actually only need one piece of foam which needs to be one centimeter by 20 centimeters we only need one piece of foam and i think maybe on that note i'm you know, thinking rather than doing question two i think let's go and take a little bit of a break and get something to some refreshments but hurry back we've still got packing to do Okay, cool. Mindset is you heard, Haley, go get yourself some refreshment, some water, some juice and all of that. You will be back straight after the break with packing, so don't go anywhere. Mm, this day. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you guys are refreshed. You had some juice, you had some water, and you're ready to get going with the packing. Just a quick shout out to Hamilton, Grandma, Heita, Lloydy, Ngelo. Yes, shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and for watching the show and for being great Mindsetters, sir. Haley, over to you. I love hearing shout outs <laughs> from everyone. Guys, come on. Join up. Yes. Let's shout out. Okay, let's carry on with question two. So now this question, um, I think... I don't know if we've used orange yet. It's been adapted from our Solutions for All, Grade 10, Chapter 15, again, page 257. We've got the floor plan of a kitchen is shown below. And this is what I was talking about in my introduction. We're not only packaging, as in packing into boxes, but how would we tile a kitchen? So we're looking at our kitchen, and our kitchen is measured 9.5 meters across, 3.25 meters. We've got 6.5 meters, an unknown, an unknown and five meters. So the tiler wants to use tiles that are 600 millimeters by 600 millimeters to tile the kitchen. Now, the question's going to unpack for us, so I'm gonna go through a couple of things as we go along. First of all, it says, calculate the area of one tile. Now we know that the area is just length by breadth, okay, is length by breadth, so we've got 600 by 600, and I'm going to get my calculator out because we're going to end up with lots of zeros. So let's do that on the calculator. 600 times by 600 gives me 360,000. So 3, 6. Right, and this is millimeters squared. Don't forget your units. Now, oh, well, I'm going to come back to that problem. Then it says calculate the area of the kitchen. Now, this is where I have a problem. The area of the kitchen is going to be in meters squared. If you go back to my diagram, you'll see that my kitchen is in meters. And you cannot work a sum in two different units. So we're going to come back to the tiles. We'll come back to it in a minute. Let's first do our kitchen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the kitchen into two shapes just to make it easier. So let's split it along there. Now, I don't know what that measurement is. I do know these two measurements. So remember, we have split this nine and a half. It kind of no longer exists, although we do need it for a second. So how much is that? Now, we've done this before. So that nine and a half that you can see there, nine and a half meters, is equal to that side and that side. So I'm first going to get my calculator out, and I'm going to say, well, okay, that will be, let me get the calculator back, 
will be my 9 comma 5 minus my 6 comma 5. So that is 3 meters. And that over there is 3 meters. And do I need to do that? No, I don't. So, but the same concept occurs. 5 meters across will be 3.25 plus that. And it all depends on which way you've split it. And you can split it more than one way. That's great. I'm going to work out the area of this. So it's 5 meters by 3 meters. And my area is, I've written, set 5 and written 15. Okay, that is 15 meters squared. And here we have, I remember my nine and a half doesn't exist anymore. I've cut it. So my length is six and a half meters. And my breadth is 3.25 meters. And I know now I'm putting the meters in, but you can leave the meters out as long as you have them in your answer. Your units must be there. Now this I'm going to need a calculator for, definitely. 6.5 times 3.25 and I get an answer of 21.125 and I'm going to keep it as 21.125. I like to round off at the very end. So that's 21.125. Let's write that in here. 21.125 and that was meters squared. So now I'll go down and say, well, what was my total? And you have to show all steps. So I would actually say, well, shape one, shape two. So it was the area of one plus the area of two. And we can label them. So that was 15 meters squared plus 21.125 meters squared. And get an answer for you. I've got my 21.125 on there. So I can just add my 15. And it was a 36.125. So that's 36.125 meters squared. And now I can probably round off. So end of the sum, now round off 36.13 meters squared. Always show that step before you round. Yeah, because if they don't want a rounded answer, you've given them the answer. If they do want it rounded, perfect, you've given the answer. And remember, matrix normally two decimal places, like unless they tell you otherwise. Now, let's move on to the next question. I'm going to explain again where the problem lies. So, my question, okay, question C, which is really not cooperating with me. What is the minimum number, the minimum number of tiles that the tiler will require to use using these area calculations? So now, if I want to work out how many tiles I need, I'm going to take my area of the floor, the area of the floor, and I'm going to divide it by the area of the tile. Because that way I'm going to get the number of tiles that I need. So this is where my problem is with my two different units. Because I cannot divide meters squared by millimeters squared cannot do that. I'm going to get it, but I don't think I've got red. Big no, no, cannot be done. So I'm going to have to go back now to my tiles and convert them into meters. Now what the question is, is do we know how to convert millimeters squared into meters? Now I know a lot of you out there are going to say, well that's quite easy because there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. So your instinct is going to be to divide this by a thousand. And again, that's a mistake. So what I always tell my kids, and I'm going to write it here in big, convert first. Because we struggle, I know you all do, you struggle to convert when you've got squared and cubed values. So I'm going to say convert first. Because what is the difference? My 600, and this is where I can divide about 1,000 because it's a one-dimensional unit, becomes 0, 0,6 meters times by 0, 0,6 meters. And now I get my calculator out, and I've got 0, 0,6. That's a 9, 6 times by 0, 0,6. And I get an answer of 0, 0,36. So my answer here is 0, 0,36 meters squared. 
Now, if I had just taken my 360,000 and divided it by my 1,000, I would have got the wrong answer. So the alternative, if you really are insisting on converting squared units, then what I'm going to tell you how to do it. So let's go just find a little bit of extra space. We're going to come back to that. What did I have? I had 360,000 millimeters squared. And I want to convert it into meters. But I know there's a thousand millimeters in a meter. I need to convert by a thousand squared. So I'll show you that on the calculator. So my 360,000, if I just divided it by my thousand, I would have had a problem. So I need to divide it by a thousand twice because it's a squared unit. And I get the correct answer, 0, 0,36. Alternatively, I could have said my 360,000 divided by a thousand squared. Get the same answer. And now you see how complicated that is and how easy it is to forget in an exam. So my advice to you, please guys, convert first. Look at what they want the answer in, go to that first. Let's carry on with our sum, which basically said how many tiles. So what was our area of our floor? Let's go back up because I can't remember the area of the floor. was 36.13. So area of my floor was 36.13 or 125 meters squared. And my area of my tile was 0, 0,36 meters squared. Now that I've got the same units, I can just do this calculation on the calculator. So let's get my calculator out. And you can use the fraction button if you'd like. 36.13 divided by 0, 0,36. And we get an answer of 100,36 tiles. And again, I have to round. But now in this case, do I round up or do I round down is the question. Now if I round down, which it seems like we should do because it's a 3 there, I'm going to have a problem because there's going to be a little gap in the floor where there is no tile. So I'm going to have to round up and I'm going to have to say I need 101 tiles. So when it comes to rounding, always make sense of it. Sometimes we can round up, sometimes we need to round down. But those are important. Let's move on to the next part of the question, but I'm going to leave you to think about it, if I can get to the next part of the question. Right, our question now says, how many whole tiles can fit into the length of the kitchen? Now let's do that one. The length of the kitchen was 9.5 meters. So I'm going to take that as 9.5 meters and I'm going to divide it by the length of my tile, which was 0, 0,6 meters. Okay, so let's get my calculator out. 9,5 divided by 0, 0,6. And I get 15,83. So that is 15,83. How many whole tiles? We can only fit 15 in. And let's do how, see how many tiles we can fit into the breadth of the kitchen. Well, what was our breadth of our kitchen? Let's go back up. It was 5 meters. So we had 5 meters. And again, it was the same size. So we had to take our 5. 5 divided by 0, 0,6. And we see that it is... Now, that's very strange. I think I made a mistake in the first one. Can't get the same answer. The first one is 15,83. Oh, no, I didn't get the same answer. I just look, was looking at the point A3. 5 divided by 0, 0,6. And that is 8,33. thought it was the same number. 8,33. So how many tiles? Well, we've got 8 tiles across. The maximum is 8. Again, we need to round. Okay. Now, this is the question I'm going to leave for you to do. Because you've, hopefully you've downloaded the notes. And we've done all the calculations now. You can sit and play around with this. What is the best way to lay the tiles so that we use as many whole tiles as possible? 
So I want you to try and lay the towels because especially we have to consider that we've got this little L shape, um, we've got this kind of little L curve. Again, do we start with whole towels against the wall or do we think, no, we're probably going to have shelves there so we might need the broken, well, not broken towels, the half towels towards the edges. So I'm going to leave you guys to do that on your own because I know you can. I'm giving you a lot to think about and you've got all the tools now that you need. What's really nice about this kind of question is that there really isn't a wrong answer. Because the way that you've decided to do it is probably correct. So I love these kind of questions where you have to decide for yourself. Lenny, do you think I've got time to go on to another question? If you do it quickly. If I do it quickly. <laughs> like you've got a minute. Okay, let's, <laughs> well, let's read it maybe. Maybe we won't go <laughs> through the question fully. Okay, so let's read question three. So question three is taken from the uh, grade 10, again, chapter 15, where we've got the same kind of question one. The base of the box below has a length of 19 centimeters and a width of 10 centimeters. How many boxes would fit onto a shelf with the dimensions of 1.3 meter and 1 meter. So this is quite an easy sum, very similar to what we've done at the moment, but I need to work in the same units. So I'm going to either work in meters or centimeters, really not important, so as long as it is the same. So I think it might be easier in this case to work in centimeters. So let's convert our 1.3. So we've got our 1.3 meters and we're going to convert it to centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in meter, becomes 130 centimeters. And my one meter becomes 100 centimeters. And now again, we can work out how we're going to fit it. So we're going to take the one, divide by the other. In fact, I'm not going to do it because I know you guys can do it. Downloaded the notes and you can do it on your own. I've given you all the clues that you need. Converting first. That's the most important thing. And I think on that note, Lenny, let's give them a bit of a break. Okay. Come back and pack. All right. Mindset is, as you heard, Haley, we were packing after the break, so you better watch us and you better stay tuned. So we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you guys are nice and refreshed and you're ready to see us packing. Hope you guys are also doing it at home here, like just some random stuff. Take a box and pack. It's so nice to do the practical stuff. So, Hayley, let's take us straight back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Lenny. Okay, guys, I put my pen down and I'm going to ask Wilson. In fact, I'm going to ask Looney to come through and help me. So she's going to stand by the box and I'm going to pass the books and we're going to decide how we're going to put them in. I don't even know where to start. Okay. So let's start <laughs> with like the box set. So we've got a box okay. set. Okay. And let's discuss how we can actually put that in. Seeing so as though the box is <laughs> rectangle. Yes, okay, so rectangular. <laughs> so you could place it like this. Place it straight. I hope you guys can actually see that. So we're going to place it. Whoops. We're going to place it straight down flat. Yes. Is that what you think? Yes. Okay, but could. we couldn't actually do it another way. We could actually place it that way, the way it oh fell. Oh yeah. So we could do it that <laughs> That's way. That's way, so that we've got more space. What okay. about? I want to try see if we could another. Let's get two boxes. If we put them flat. Whoops. Do they yes. fit next to each other that way? They do. We see, I hope they can see this. Hope they can <laughs> see. I hope you guys can see this. Okay. Or we could put them, I don't know, maybe this way. No, that won't work. Maybe like that way. Yes, yeah. that could work as well. That could work as yes, well. Yes, because you can fit another one in here. And So should we carry on trying to pack and see if we can get them all okay, in? Okay, cool. Okay, so what do we go? What, which way are we going? Should with? I hold the box? Wait. We can put it on the floor. Oh, okay, cool. Which way should we should we should we, should we try flat? Let's try this Let's way. Let's try first. this way. Yes. Okay. So we're going to put in, and now need something thin. Okay. What about this uh, exam exam revision? That could Will fit. That fit in. Now we'll try like well, putting it. Okay. We try we try an exam. Oh, we try it sideways. Oh, and now I've got a big box set. There's quite different sizes. Yes. They're different thicknesses. Okay. So this is what we've got so far. And this will fit in here. Do no, it won't. Let's take that so one yes. out and put that one yes. in. Yes, there you okay. go. So then we're getting close. Yes. But we've still got quite a bit to fit in. Maybe if we stack more on top. Okay, let's try. Maybe we put this one flat. Should we try to put this one flat? Yes. And we've got this funny odd one. This exam revision. 
there's an odd one. And we've got English, let's put box set in. Okay, I've still got books to fit in. Let's Would see. our box fit? Books. Now I've been told that this all fits in. You've got anyway, books to fit in. Books to fit in. Okay, let's some thick come. ones and some thin ones. Give me ones. some small ones oh, then. Small ones, okay. Yes, give me the small now, ones. And what are we going to do with those? We're going to put them on the side. Yes. Perfect. There's another small one. Okay. We are packing this box. And I promise you've given it another like a couple of people and they would pack it totally differently. I've got another big box. Okay, this one. Another big box. That's it. Yes. Look at that. We've Champions. done it. Okay, let's see how yeah. right, we've done it. And we've even got a little bit of space. <laughs> we need some foam yes. allowance. So yes. hopefully they won't get damaged. Some cover. Okay, so guys, now your challenge is to go and buy all these books so we can send you this <laughs> big box of heavy books. Thanks, Lenny. Okay, <laughs> Thank you. you're welcome. Okay. So what I was saying is that give it another couple of packers and they would do it differently. You know, that's an interesting thing. I'm going to go back to my board. Thanks, also. Um, an interesting thing about packing when you pack a house. If I pack a box, I don't think I would have done nearly as good a job as you. Mm. If I pack a box, I need like 100 boxes no, to pack up my house. No, but you need to find like a way of... How are you going to pack it, like the different sizes the different and the sizes angles, and if you're going to put it flat and all of that stuff, so that you can create space. So you see what I did there with like the opening the, and, and the books, on the, the thin books. The I wouldn't have thought of doing that. <laughs> so Lenny's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Love it. Okay. And if ever I move house, I'm finding Lenny to come and help me. <laughs> because the maths of it I can do. Mm. I can understand it in my head. But practically, not so good at it. And this is why people uh, specialize in packing, you know. And uh, if you get a packing company and they do it for you, they do it way more efficiently than anybody I know. And on that note, let us go back and do a little bit more sums. So the last question that I left you on <coughs> was the question with the, with the box. And I'm going to leave you there because I know you guys can do it. So let's move on to different shapes. So what we have now is we are busy with, okay, so this will be question four, again from our Macmillan book, grade 10, and chapter, I think we've lost that, that's probably chapter 15, I'm sure. So, which is the most economical way to package four cans of fizzy drink? And we're gonna use the sketches to help us. So they've given us sketches to actually help us along. So, the what we've been told is our diameter is 6.5 centimeters. So that is an important fact, which means I've got that over there is 6.5, and then two of those, of course, will be double. And that going across there is also 6.5, because it's a diameter. So I can package my four cold drinks next to each other like that, um, um, two, sorry, two rows of two, or I can package it as four rows of one. So first thing I need to do is I need to reread the question. So the question said, what is the most economical way to package? Now we need to think about what does the economical mean? Economical means that it's cheaper and it's easier to package. So we need to work out the area of both of these boxes. We've got a square and a rectangle. So let's deal with one at a time. So in my square, I have to work out my length, and my length was my two cans, the 6.5 um, times two, so that is 6.5 times two, or 6.5 plus 6.5. Let's do that on the calculator. So I get a 6.5 times two, and that's 13. So this is 13 centimeters. So my area of the square, I'm do this like that, the area of my square is 13 by 13. And we need a calculator for that. We should know this. And I always tell my kids to check it. You know, sometimes I get strange answers, like two times four is six. So I'd rather check. So that is 169 centimeters squared. Right, let us now check our rectangle. So my rectangle, my Width will be 6,5 centimeters, and my length will be 6,5 times 4. I should probably change colors for that. 
So it stands out. Anyway, 6.5 times 4, and I get 26. So this is, let's change the color here, this is 26 centimeters. So my area of my, tri of my rectangle was 6.5 by 26. And let's see what that comes up to. So 26 times 6.5, and I get an answer of 169 centimeters. So my area, my surface area is exactly the same. So now I'm going to think of something else that would make a difference. So what else could make a difference and to the decision that I make as to which is most economical? Now if I think about it, I can think about things like space in a truck. How many of these boxes can I fit into a truck? How awkward is this box being this long, thin rectangle? 26 centimeters by six and a half centimeters. So you can use different facts to actually answer the question. But do the maths first. Now we came up with the same answers, but do, as so I want you to do the maths first. We can also look at empty space. How much space is left over? How much of this is empty space? So I would have gone with, which is the most economical? The most economical is my square. And I'm gonna actually say that my square the square, I'm not drawing a very good square, so the square is better because it's easier to deal with, easier to pack, easier to put on the shelves, it makes it a whole lot easier We're, rather than this longer, thin, narrow um, box. Also now it depends, we're only looking at one layer, depends on how many tins we actually need to fit in, because if we need to fit um, if we need to make this like three layers long, so we're going to put 12 into a box. If I make it high, going 12, this one's going to be very awkward. It's going to be this very thin, narrow, tall box. So these are things that you need to bear in mind. Okay. And we've got, oh, the next question. So question five. Again, coming from the grade 10, that's what I was right, chapter 15, on page 266. A can of sparkling lemonade has a round base of the diameter of 5.2 centimeters. So it's kind of a similar question, but let's see what, how they've, let, let's see what questions they ask. So they've got, there's three possible ways that 12 cans could be arranged in a cardboard carton. So how many, and we're looking at we're only looking at the base and we want to put 12 cans on the base. We have got the diameter of 5.2. So let's get a little bit of space. I'm actually going to move down to the bottom of the page. So if I need to put 12 cans in, so I've got oh yeah, my circle, okay, and I want to put 12 of them. I could actually make it a very long, narrow 12 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can make it a box like that. And I could add the box around that. Okay, so that would be one way of putting it in. Okay, this very narrow, long, very long box. Or I could make it 6 and make them 2, 6 next to each other. Okay. So two by six would be another way of doing it. Alternatively, I could actually do it as fours and make three fours. And each of these is giving me 12 tins. Okay, so I'm going to add to this. This was one by 12, that was two by six, and that was four by three or three by four, which kind of is going to give me the same thing. Okay, so those are the three different ways that I can think of doing these 12 boxes. So that's three possible ways. Calculate the area of the base of the cartons in each arrangement. So in each arrangement, we need to calculate the area. Now we know this is 5.2 because that was my diameter. So in that one, it's quite easy. That was 5.2. And we've got 12 cans across. So here I have, let's add the maths first, 12 times 5.2. And let's get that answer, 12 times 5.2, and it is 62.4, very awkward box. 
and then my area would be multiplying this. So can you see how awkward this box is? It's like 60 centimeters, which is about this long, by like five centimeters. Very awkward thin shape. But let's get my area. Let's do the area in a different color. So I'm going to say 5.2 times 62.4. And get my calculator out. 62.4, just check your calculator always, is 324.48. 324.48 and that was centimeters squared remember don't forget your units in this one we've got 5.2 let's use our green again 5.2 times 2 and 5.2 times 6 I don't think I can do this all at once on my calculator I've got oh, let's use our brackets 5.2 times 2 and we are timesing that, and we don't really need the brackets in this case, by 5.2 times 6 to get my area. And I get 324.48. And do I need to guess? Let's do the calculation. But my guess is it's going to be the same. So let's see, we've got, here we've got, let's get the green out again. Here we've got 3 times 5.2. And we've got 4 times 5.2. And our calculator, 3 times 5.2 times, let's put that in a bracket, times by 4 times 5.2, and it's 324.48. So again, but which is the best way to do it? And remember, we're going to be making this higher because we're probably going to be delivering more than 12 tins. So we're not going to have it just one tin high. So get back to the question. And then the question says, what is the best way to package the 12 cans so that the base of the cotton uses the least area? Well, we know that they're using the same area. So which is actually the best? The best would be the one that is the smallest amount of cardboard as far as um, convenience of size of being able to package that into something else. Okay. And it makes more sense, it makes it sturdier, easy to carry, easy to use. So I think those are the things that you need to take into account when doing this kind of question, especially when you've got the same type of answers. So think outside the box, so to speak. And on that note, guys, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Go practice packing and go practice doing these examples and then finish those sums that I didn't complete because I know that you can do it. So bye guys. All right. Mind teachers, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to post on our Facebook wall, guys. It's been so, so quiet. And on to the Adlern Extra. Thank you to Macmillan for sponsoring our great show. And thank you to you guys at home for tuning in. Remember to pack strategically. And until next time, we'll see you then.